hello everyone and welcome to a new video mc mora here and in today's video we are gonna talk all about ryu and how you can use him in street fighter 5 so let us get started So what type of character is Ryu? Well Ryu obviously is the ultimate jack of all trade. He have his traditional fireballs and they are really really good. He have his traditional hurricane kicks and these of course are really good in combos and they are also good to use against fireballs if you have a read on them. He of course have his dragon punches, shoryukens and shoryukens are really really good as an anti-air so you can use him to anti-air your opponent. And that is kind of a segue to his next strengths. Ryu is very good at anti-airs. So, for example, you find that he has his heavy kick for far range jumps. He has his crouching heavy punch, which is really, really good. In the air, jumping medium punch is very good as well. And of course, the Shoryuken is a very powerful anti-air. So Ryu has an answer to almost every angle when it comes to jumping. Ryu of course also have really high damage output and stun, so for example a basic combo with him, something like this is doing really good damage for how easy it is, even if you do the target combo, you will find that you are doing really good damage and stun of course, if you want something a little bit more fancy with V trigger, he can get high damage output combos like this, right, which is doing a ton of damage and stun, so his damage and stun are both very very good. You will notice that Ryu also have really good mobility. His forward dash is particularly strong in this game and the back dash is very good as well. His walk speed is nice but it is not the best but it is functional of course. So what are the issues with Ryu? Well there are three main issues in my opinion. The first one is that his range is not very good. Ryu's normals are actually really fast. But the issue with him is not that his normals are slow, it is that they are just kinda short. So his normal ranges or the, the attack or the range of his attacks are a little bit below average. So that kinda sucks. And the other main issue with Ryu is that for the most part he is still an honest character. He doesn't have that much on the way of mix-ups, not really that much in terms to overhead or low or like right left mix up so he is a very solid very strong character but he doesn't have a lot of gimmicks the other thing with Ryu that's actually it's not an issue of the character himself but it is just is what it is and it is that Ryu of course is the most popular character in Street Fighter potentially in all of fighting games so everyone knows how to fight against Ryu you will not get away with lack of knowledge from your opponent you will never be able to gimmick your opponent or do something that they haven't seen before, right? So if you are gonna play with Ryu, you're gonna have to expect that you are gonna have to play a very solid game and you are not gonna get away with gimmicks or tricks that your opponent haven't seen before. So now let us check out Ryu's normal attacks and like we always do, we are gonna start with the light attacks. And the first one is his standing light punch and Ryu's standing light punch is his 3 frame. Again 3 frame is the fastest a normal can be in Street Fighter V. It's of course always good to have a 3 frame attack but the issue with Ryu's is that it is really short. So as you can see you have to be very close for it to contact his opponent. It does have multiple uses of course. The first one is because it's a 3 frame you can use it to interrupt your opponent. So let's say for example Ken is doing a string like that one. He can use his 3 frame to interrupt that, right? And then you counter hit combo into the medium punch and get something going. So that is very good. But like I said, because it's very short, it is easy to be forced into situations like this. Where as you can see, Ryu's jab is coming out, but because it's super short, it is getting punished. So this is something that you have to be careful. Although he does have a 3 frame, it is easy to make it whiff and force a whiff punish. The other main use for his 3 frame or his jab is in pressure. And of course it is his take grab, so you can use it. You will be on throw range if your opponent happened to block it. You will be in throw range, so you can throw them after. So this is his main throw. This is his main text throw attack, right? Sending jab into 
throw. And some things that is really really cool about Ryu is that he can use his jab along with his crouching light kick and crouching light punch kinda in conjunction. So what do I mean by that? One of the more popular defensive options that a lot of people like to do in Street Fighter V is to walk backward. Like, like they are gonna hold walk back so they are gonna try to walk out of your attacks. The good thing about Ryu is that you can do standing light punch and if you happen to block you're still in range to do crouching light kick, crouching light punch and this is very very good. So for example on offense you can do jab and then throw them after or you can do jab, crouching light kick, crouching light punch into Tatsu. Right? And this is a very good sequence to keep your pressure going. So you can go for stuff like that or just jab into throw. So in general it is a pretty decent tech grab, it is good for pressure. You can use it for interruption, although it is a little bit tricky for that. He other normals, of course, the ones we are talked about, his crouching light kick and crouching light punch. These work together for that sequence we just showed. Generally, the crouching light punch is kind of a decent buffer, actually. You can kinda use it to wave punish some stuff because it is pretty fast. And to check out forward movement. It doesn't lead too much. And on hits you can combo, you know, you can combo it into a standing light punch, so you can get this to combo. So maybe you can do something like this: jab, jab into light kick Tatsu. So that is decent, but it is it doesn't really serve that big of purposes, right? One of my, the biggest issues with the crouching light punch is that when you do it on block, you are not in throw range afterwards, so that is kind of an issue. But like I said earlier, one of the best things about this is its ability to catch forward movement so you can get stuff like that right like checking that his forward dash you can buffer it in the neutral and it is pretty good for that so you can use this in offensive strings like the one we just seen you can use it in, to check out forward dashes or check out forward movement in general kind of like a low a low poke pretty much or a low commitment poke but it doesn't really lead to that much more than that the crouching light kick of course is to catch your opponent walking backwards like we just showed so if he is trying to walk backward again this is a pretty nice way of shutting that down and like you just seen the sequence I just showed you it also combo and hit so that is a very very strong sequence with Ryu in my opinion and the crouching light kicks hit slow so you can catch your opponents trying to walk back combo into the crouching jab and then the tatsu all of these three normals in general, the standing light punch, crouching light kick and crouching light punch, all three of them work together to create this powerful offensive sequence. But of course, again, one thing that you have to consider about the crouching light kick, you are not in throw range after it on block. You have to move forward to throw your opponent. It is only plus one, so it is not fantastic for that. For tech grabs, the best one is the standing light punch. This is the one that will leave you in throw range and it is the best one to throw your opponent afterward. The crouching ones, you have to walk forward to throw your opponent, but of course they can also walk backwards, so there is a little bit of a situation there. The final light you have, and this is potentially his best one, is his standing light kick. The standing light kick is a very good normal for you. It is a 4 frames attack and that makes it very very good. Ryu actually is one of the best characters at punishing minus 4. So for example, Ken can do an attack like that, his heavy kick Tatsu, that leaves him at minus 4. You can punish it with light kick into Tatsu or like light kick into Hadouken. Right, as you can see it is it have pretty good range and you can get some decent punches out of it. This is actually above average in my opinion, most characters don't punish minus 4 or like heavy kick style attacks as well as Ryu does. So for that purposes it is actually really good. This is gonna be a big part of your neutral, buffering this into fireball. It doesn't normally combo into fireball, so this is something that you have to kinda consider. Like if Ken does the attack below like we just seen, let's, do him, let's make him do the same sequence again. If he does this, the light kick to fireball that doesn't combo, right? But you can combo into Tatsu if you want to punish. So if you want to use it as a punish, you can just straight out go to the Tatsu. Or if you want to use it as a poke or a buffer, you can use it to then you know cancel into fireball. On counter hit on some ranges it might combo, but it is not a very consistent tool at that. Overall, the standing light kick is a main combo tool. 
it is a one of the main or one of the best punish attacks in the game. And now for his medium attacks, I'm gonna start with the standing medium bunch. And Ryu standing medium bunch is probably the key attack for Ryu. You're gonna see it being used in combos all the time, right? On a hit, the standing medium bunch is plus six. And this is a big number because it means that it can combo into itself, it can combo into crouching medium bunch, into crouching medium kick, into even crouching heavy punch. So in combos, you're gonna be doing a lot of that. Like medium bunch, into crouching heavy, into maybe tatsu, or like into crouching medium bunch or kicks, and then tatsu or donkey kick, or hadouken, or whatever you like, right? So it is very very good for that. Also, it does have two target combos attached to it. The target combo is medium bunch, heavy punch, heavy kick, or medium bunch, down plus heavy punch, heavy kick. And it is important to know the distinction between these two. If your opponent is crouching and you do the first target combo, which is medium heavy bunch heavy kick, the last hit will whiff, right? It will go over their head. So if you want to hit opponent who are ducking, you do down plus heavy punch. It will force them to stand up and the third hit will link. If you have V skill 2, like, you have, like I have now, you can even add a V skill 2 there. So you can do something like this. Which is again, like you're seeing, is a pretty good damage output, right? And because it can combo into itself, you can do the first standing medium punch and then do that attack. So for example, you can do something like this, right? Starting the first one and on the second one completing the string. So you can do something like this now from a jumping combo that is almost 320 damage. That is going to be around 30% on the average character which is a very good damage output for something that is very easy to do, right? So standing medium bunch is a very good combo attack. It is also pretty nice on block because it is plus two. It is five frame startup, which is very important. Five frame startup is really, really good because it will beat three frame attacks or three frame light attacks. So it is very good in that regard. However, Something I have to say is that you don't want to use the standing medium punch as your first part of your block string. So let me show you an example. Let's for example if have Ken try to do a jab after blocking our attacks, right? If I do my string which is standing medium punch, it is plus, so it's gonna beat his, his other or normal. If I do standing medium punch into standing medium punch, it will beat his jab, right? But because there is some pushback here, I don't really get to do much here. I'm plus 8, yes, but I can get a crouching medium punch. I can't get a crouching medium kick. I can't get a standing heavy punch. And I can't even get a crouching heavy punch. I can't really do that much at this situation. What you can do here is a sweep, which is not bad, but it is a decent damage, but not fantastic. What you want to do is use it as the second attack in a block string. So you can do something like standing light punch and then throw or standing light punch into standing medium punch. And now when I get this, I am still plus eight, but I am a lot closer to my opponent. So this means that I can now get stuff like that, right? I can come, I am in range to combo into my other normals. So I get to do this now. So in my opinion, if you want to use the standing medium punch and pressure, use it as the second hit, right? Because even if we, even if the opponent didn't try to mash, let us check out a block sequence. You can do medium punch, medium punch, crouching, medium kick. And notice that the crouching medium kick is whiffing, right? I am not in range to get the crouching medium kick. And that will lead us to our next normal, which is the crouching medium punch. Crouching medium punch is 6 frame startup, so it is 1 frame slower. But it is a better pressure normal because it have less pushback. So this is the one that is better to use as the first part of your block string. You can do crouching medium punch, standing medium punch into crouching medium kick. This entire sequence will connect as you can see. So if you're trying to pressure your opponents, it's always better to do that then it is to do two standing mediums because then you don't get the third attack. But if you start your block string with the crouching medium punch, 
you get to do three mediums, and even if it happened, let's have this here have can try to mash. Right, you are getting the damage. This is a lot better than just getting this, right? Look at the comparison here. We're here getting a ton more damage compared to just medium bunch to sweep, right? So in my opinion, the crouching medium bunch is a very good pressure normal. It's a very good. You can't frame trap with it into itself, but you can frame trap with it into standing medium bunch, right? So start with the crouching medium bunch and then go to the standing medium bunch on block. So this is the first one. This is the second one. This is a very good block sequence, by the way. The crouching medium bunch, of course, also have other uses. It have good range. So this one have good range and the hitbox is very, very good. And because of this, you can use it a lot in combos. So you can do standing medium bunch, crouching medium bunch. And then combo into donkey kick or combo into tatsu, for example. It is a decent combo attack. So that is one of its uses. And also it is a really good attack at checking forward movement. So for example, let's here have Ken try to dash. You will, f that's not the dash, I think it's this one. You will find that the crouching, as you can see, you can use it and buffer it to fireballs. And this is very good against opponent who like to dash a lot or like to forward move a lot. Pretty much it, is, it have a very good hitbox for that, for catching your opponent trying to move forward. You can buffer it to Tatsu or buffer it into EX Donkey or buffer it straight to Donkey. And you can get good damage out of that, right? Maybe cancel into Hadouken then or get something like that going and getting good damage. So this is good for combos, it's good to start your pressure with and it is good to check forward movement. Used to be decent anti-air but not anymore. So for now, use it to shift forward movement for combos and for pressure. The other normal is of course one of his legendary normals and that is the crouching medium kick. Reuse crouching medium kick is very very good. It is, it, it, it is one of the normals that has always been good and Ryu doing crouching medium kick into Hadouken, this is one of the key ways to check your opponent, right? It, it hits low, so your opponent have to hit it block or block it low it have good range as you can see for a crouching medium kick in Street Fighter 5 this actually have good range it is six frames so the speed is actually nice as well and you can do it and then do Hadouken after it this is gonna be one of your main ways to just tag little a little bit of damage one by one against your opponent right you can do like a block string like that one and then catch them in the last hit with a crouching medium kick into Hadouken that is gonna be a very big part of playing Ryu. Crouching medium kick Hadouken is one of the biggest, one of the biggest parts of Ryu, right? There are a couple of things that you have to note though, and that on counter hit, it now is, uh, let's have it not hit now. On counter hit, it is plus four. So if you didn't cancel into Hadouken, you can then combo light kick after it. So you can do something like this now. Although you have to be a little bit close to get that one, and because it is plus 4 now, it's a lot easier to get crouching medium kick into Hadouken, right? On counter hit, even maximum range, if you do crouching medium kick into heavy Hadouken, this should always combo now on counter hit, even from max range. So that is very, very nice. And of course, now in this season, you can do it and then combo into Tatsu, and that will hit crouching opponents. There is the idea that the crouching medium kick into Tatsu is hit confirmable. I have yet to try it out myself, honestly. I don't really do that. But it is an option that is out there. And of course, just like the crouching medium bunch, crouching medium kick is also important at checking forward movement. So if, for example, Ken is dashing here again, you can use this to check forward movement like that. Now you can combo it into EX Donkey. Now this is a very good buffer now, then you get to pressure your opponent and do whatever you want. So this is a good poke, it's a good low check, it's good to use in combos of course, because it combos from standing medium bunch. This is a combo. So you can get stuff like that out of it. And of course, like I said, good to check forward movement, get to check backward movement, good for combos, decent to use on pressure. If your opponent is blocking, it's only minus one on block, so it's totally safe. It is a very, very strong low poke in general. 
The final medium you have is his standing medium kick. This is an okay normal. It is not that fantastic. It's good against low attacks. So for example, let's here have Ken do something like a... Like he's gonna do his crouching medium kick. You're gonna see that it is good versus that type of attacks, right? Maybe then you can activate V trigger and get a decent conversion afterwards. But it doesn't it doesn't have that much purpose other than that, honestly. Other than beating crouching attacks like that, which is nice. It has it does have some utility. And again, if you have V trigger, you can get some good damage with it. But it doesn't really serve that much more. It's just a poke. And not really anything more than that, which is totally fine. He also have one final normal that is a medium. It's technically a unique normal or a command normal. That is the forward medium bunch. It is his overhead. Uh, it's a very generic overhead. Of course, it is unsafe on block. If your opponent happened to block it, it is minus seven, so it is unsafe. Uh, one thing I actually do want to say quickly regarding the overhead. Sometimes when you're using Ryu, if you want to walk forward and do medium punch, so you want to walk forward and do medium punch like that, sometimes you will press forward plus the medium and you get the overhead by accident. What I like to do is, as I'm moving forward, I, I'm gonna, I, I made it a habit to press back plus medium punch. Like do my medium punch with back plus medium punch to avoid getting the overhead. So if you if you do a lot of walk forward medium bunch, make sure that you are clean with your inputs because you can get the overhead by accident. Something that I had to highlight because I have seen it so many times. It does have a good range for an overhead. It's pretty much a round ender. You don't really get that much out of it on counter hit or on regular hit. It's only plus one. Doesn't leave you in throw range or anything. Not really much to go on. Can't be trigger cancel it. Can't really combo after it. It is just a very, very standard and very generic overhead, but it's good to have the option. And now it's time to talk about Ryu's heavy attacks, and of course the first one is his standing heavy punch. This actually is really, really nice, because as you just saw, it is minus one on block. It is a heavy priority attack, so it will beat medium and light attacks if they collide with each other. So that is very, very nice, and this have two main uses in my opinion. The first thing is that you can complete the target combo if you want. So remember the target combo was medium punch, heavy punch, heavy kick. If you just land the heavy punch, you can just straight out complete the heavy kick part. And of course, if you have the V skill 2, you can then do the V skill 2. So you can just do this part if you want, right? But one of the strengths of this attack now is that it is also special cancelable. And because it is special cancelable, you can pretty much get a lot of damage out of it now. Before you had to do something like this, which was fine, but now you can get to combo into Tatsu, or into Donkey Kick, into whatever you want. And because this attack is a heavy attack, because it's cancelable and because it's safe, it's now a very good attack to throw out in the neutral. Pretty much you are walking back and forth, you are doing the standing heavy punch, it, it is relatively safe on whiff, it doesn't have that much recovery frames, so it is good to just throw it out there, Hope that you collide with someone and if you happen to land a hit, confirm that and complete the combo. So for example, let's now have random guard and random counter, right? On block, I can just do a Hadouken or just empty. On hit, I can do the Tatsu or the Donkey Kick. Or just do nothing because I'm minus one, so I'm completely safe. So that is the main application as you can just see. You can throw it out in the neutral. React to the hit and follow the combo, and don't block, just do Hadouken or don't do anything. That is very, very good. Another part that makes this really, really good is actually using it in shimmies. What is a shimmy? Shimmy is when your opponent, pretty much you trick your opponent into thinking that you're gonna throw, and then not throw them. We said earlier that reuse standing light punch is very good, because you can use light punch and then throw your opponent. So Ken is now will try to break that throw, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the jab and then I'm gonna take a tiny step backward. He is gonna whiff his throw at him. And then I tag him with my standing heavy bunch. So this is pretty much it. That is very, very good, right? For that situation, this attack is actually really, really good. Also in the corner, 
you actually get nice conversions here. If you happen to land the crush counter, so for example, let's say that we knocked Ken down, we got a crush counter here. If we do the medium kick, heavy kick target combo, you can absolutely combo after that in the corner. So you can get stuff like that now, heavy, cap, heavy uppercut, you can use it and then we trigger cancel. And then go for tricky 50-50 side switches. You can even do, if you have V-Trigger 1, you can even get an uppercut, a double uppercut combo. So you can do something like this. Activate V-Trigger, light uppercut, heavy uppercut. And of course this can lead to epic combos like these. And then you do super, which is massive damage and looks extremely cool. So this is gonna be used a lot for shimmies and for fishing in the neutral. It's a very very good attack. You're pretty much swinging with a heavy priority attack that is safe on block, reasonably have decent recovery on whiff, and very hit confirmable. Very easy to react to the hit and follow up with the combo. So that is very very nice. Of course his other punch heavy is the crouching heavy punch. And the crouching heavy punch is a very good attack as well. This is gonna be a combo attack. You're gonna use it a lot after standing medium punch for maximum damage. So you're gonna do something like this, right? Which is standing medium punch into crouching heavy punch and then cancel into Tatsu or uppercut, right? You can do that or you can just straight out combo into the Tatsu if you want. In the corner, you can do EX Tatsu into uppercut. Pretty much it is used after standing medium punch for maximum damage combos. So crouching heavy punch is gonna be used a lot for combos and of course you can use it as an anti-air. If Ken here is gonna jump on us, let's have him jump again. If you don't ha if you're still training on your uppercuts or two dragon punches, you can absolutely use the crouching heavy punch as an anti-air. This is your main key normal to be used as an anti-air, so that is very very good, right? So it is pretty decent at that. Now, he also have, of course, his other... Well, this one is a unique normal, but it is the forward heavy punch. They call it the solar plexus. Solar plexus is a very big part of Ryu, actually. It have a lot of recovery on whiff. So if you whiff it, you can get punished. And uh, it, the reason that this attack is so good is because of his forward dash. When you are from this range with Ryu, right? You can dash, surprise dash forward and throw your opponent, right? You are from this distance, surprise dash, throw your opponent, that is very good. You can jump and that will cross up, which is gonna be hard for your opponent to block. Or you can do the forward heavy punch. It's a forward moving heavy attack, right? So that is good, it will beat medium and light. And also it is safe on block, on block it is minus two. So because this is minus two, it's actually really, really good, right? It's very good at minus two. And if you happen to land the solar plexus on hit, he's gonna be plus, right? So you're gonna be plus eight. And at plus eight, you get to combo whatever you want, right? You can go straight to heavy punch. So you can do something like this. You can do it and then combo into crouching heavy punch. You can do it and then do medium to medium, right? You can do it and then combo into sweep. Pretty much you do whatever you want. My favorite or the, what I like to do the most now is to just do crouching heavy punch into uppercut or standing heavy punch into uppercut or donkey. So you can do something like this or maybe from some range donkey into uppercut and that is really high damage output, right? So from this, from this distance, make sure to dash, jump or solar plexus. This is gonna be your main uh, these, these are your main tools from the dash distance and it is very important as a Ryu player to make the most out of this just walking forward, harassing with the low, dashing into grab, jumping or checking with the forward heavy punch the dash is what makes solar plexus hard to deal with so that is a very good normal for Ryu and of course you can V-trigger cancel outfit so you can do it V-trigger cancel and in block this leave you with a lot of plus frames as you can see, he's plus 7, so you can get to pressure your opponent after it. But you have to do it out of the first hit zone. Right? So you can get to pressure your opponent after it. 
and potentially get a lot of damage. This is again one of the key neutral tools with Ryu. So you have to use it a lot and you have to be really good at using it by mixing it in with the dashes and the jumps. Now he, his kick heavy attacks are also pretty nice. He has the standing heavy kick. This have multiple uses. First of all, this whiffs on crouching opponents. So that is important to note. If your opponent is ducking, they will go, you know, it will go over them. But it is a pretty nice anti-air. So if your opponent here is jumping, for example, for far range jumps, it is a pretty decent anti-air. You can even get it to crush counter from some ranges. Of course, it doesn't have any invincibility, so it's not it's not a guaranteed punish versus air attacks, but it is pretty nice, right? It can trade a lot, gonna depend a lot on your opponent. Ken in particular have really good jumps. But as you can see, you can kind of use it for far range jumps, right? So it is okay at that. It is also his main crush counter attack. So if your opponent does something that you can punish with a crush counter, let's say Ken did a dragon punch, you can punish it with standing heavy kick. And after it, you get whatever combo you want. I will be leaving a lot of combos in the combo section. So this is your main crush counter punish, right? And it's also really good at checking forward movement as well, actually. So for example, if Ken here is dashing at us again, you will find that because Ryu moves forward, it's actually pretty good at checking dashes as well. So it is a pretty good attack, have some risks to it, but again, really, really strong. The final normal that he have is the sweep. Uh, Ryu's sweep is okay. It have... The range isn't fantastic. So as you can see, the range is actually kinda eh, it's not that good. But it is fast, it is 7 frame startup, which ties for the fastest sweep in the game. To have a very fast sweep, you can get to combo into it if you do a counter hit standing medium bunch. So that is nice. He gets a decent situation after it. You dash up and you're plus 4, so the follow up is actually nice. And it is a decent move to use to activate V trigger. You're gonna be doing stuff like that a lot with Ryu. Sweep the trigger activate is actually a pretty good one because you will be at a lot of plus frames as you can see that was minus 12 Right, so that is pretty nice The other or the final final attack he have is a another unique normal and that is the back heavy kick <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry back heavy kick is good to use in combos you can use it as a meaty, and it is also a decent neutral tool because it is special cancelable and have good range. It is his longest range cancelable attack. So for example, if I'm from this distance, nothing will reach, right? Crouching medium kick doesn't reach, standing heavy bunch doesn't reach, back heavy kick will, and it will cancel into Hadouken. So it is the longest range cancelable attack he have, so you can use it in the neutral for that purpose. Also, of course, you can use it in combos because it deals a lot of damage. It is a heavy attack, so you can do something like this and cancel out of the second hit. That stuff does a lot of damage as well. So it is a good attack for that. You can use it, like I said, in the neutral as a poke or in combos. It can also kind of work as an anti-air if they are jumping a little bit closer to you. You can use it as an anti-air like that. Although it is a little bit inconsistent in that regard, but it can work. And with some angles like that one, you can even get a follow-up DB here. But it is tricky, right? So overall, Ryu have good normals. It's just that the range is kind of annoying on some of them. Could be longer, but overall his normals are actually really, really nice. So let us now talk for a bit about Ryu's V skills and his notable jumping attacks. And I'm gonna start first with the jumping attacks. His jumping medium kick is his main cross-up attack, right? This is good because it leaves him at a good enough frames so that he can combo whatever he wants after it. He can get a standing medium punch fairly easy after it. This means that he can combo into crouching heavy, into maybe Tatsu. Or like crouching heavy into donkey. Pretty much it is easy to get a good combo after it, right? So that makes it really, really nice. Jumping light kick also is a cross-up. But the thing about the jumping light kick, it is more ambiguous to anti-air. So it can be harder for your opponent to know which side to block. 
but because it is a light attack, it is harder to get good combos after it. If you do the jumping light, I would recommend comboing lights after it. So you would do something like this instead of jumping with the medium and getting the full damage, right? So this is a little bit more tricky, but harder to block and lesser reward, while the jumping heavy is a more rewarding, but a little bit more straightforward jump, right? He also have his jumping heavy bunch, which is a good uh, downwards, you know, forward hitting attack. It's not gonna hit close up, but it is good at, at stuffing anti-airs pretty much. It have it hits at a good angle, so this will beat many anti-airs in the game, making it a really good jumping attack. And his jumping heavy kick is also quite, uh, you know, it's quite horizontal. So you can jump from a little bit of far distances like that and get the jumping heavy kick, right? It is really good at that. It has so much hit stun, as you can see, you are plus 13. So it's very easy to combo after it, whatever you want, right? And get the ball going. And obviously, like we said at the start, his jumping media bunch is an air to air. You can special cancel it into Tatsu or EX Tatsu. All of that will combo. So you can jump back or jump air to air and get good damage. Also, you can land it, and your opponent will be in a juggle state here. So you can combo like an EX uppercut in this situation. These are pretty much his notable jumping attacks, right? Most Ryu in general have really good jumping attacks, and Shoto in particular, the Shoto characters in general do have really good jumping attacks, and Ryu is no exception. Now it's time to talk about his V skills, and there is a lot to talk about here. The first one is his V skill one, and that is the parry. Reuse parry is either really good or really bad, depending on the context, uh, depending on how you perceive the parry should be, right? It being a parry means that it is very good versus telegraphed attacks. So for example, if Honda here is doing something like his butt slam, right? That is plus 5 on block. It means that Honda pretty much gets to do whatever he wants on block, right? So you either would have to uppercut it, or just block it and have to hold whatever Honda is gonna do next. It's very very good for that. But because you have a parry, he can parry it and get full combo punishes, right? So having the option to parry attacks like that is actually really really strong, right? It gives you a really good tool to handle telegraphed attacks. And there are many telegraphed attacks in Street Fighter V that a parry would be really good against. And one of the buffs that Capcom gave Ryu is that you can do the parry and then cancel into an EX move immediately. So if, for example, if we do the same thing again, we can immediately go into the shore you kill, and that is very very nice, right? Even if your opponent is doing something like a jumping heavy kick, for example. Let's say you have Honda do something this simple. You can just parry and immediately do an EX attack. So that is very good. The issue with the parry is that it is a crush, it puts Ryu in a crush counter state. So if he mistimed it, he can get crush countered. So that is unfortunate, right? There is a lot of risk in doing this, and that's why I don't recommend using it a lot, right? You don't have to use this willy nilly, you have to know exactly what you're trying to parry. One of the benefits of it is, like I said, the ability to parry and then cancel into EX specials. So for example, if I time this right, you can do something like this and get a punish here. But like you have seen, if you miss time this, you can get crush counter. The parry also has startup, so you cannot wake up from the ground with the parry. Your opponent meteor attack will most likely beat it. It has a 3 frame startup, so it is kind of like a jab. If your jab was gonna stuff whatever your opponent is doing, the parry is gonna function mostly in the same way. There are some exceptions depending on the frame data. But it's a, it's a whole other topic. Pretty much, it's not a fantastic wake-up tool, right? That is what you have to know. The parry also have a really important use, and that is in offense. One of the common things that I'm sure you have seen if you watched any of the high-level review players is something they call the parry OS, right? So they do something like this, right? You're gonna do a block sequence, and your opponent will be reversal. <coughs> Typically, we said that Ryu doing uh, crouching medium punch into standing medium punch is very good, right? But like you see in Honda, will be reversal. 
So what you can do is do crouching medium, standing medium, and OS a, a parry. Pretty much this is the emblem. Crouching medium bunch, standing medium bunch, immediately do the parry afterwards. If your opponent does a V reversal, they will get hit, so let's check this out. It's gonna be something like that, right? I did my same input because Honda did his V reversal. The screen freeze made it so that my standing medium didn't come out, and I get the parry, which then Ryu can punish Honda for. Right? So then you get to combo Honda at this situation. Parry OS is very powerful. This is actually a very powerful tool. So his parry or the V skill one in general is really good for telegraphed attacks and it's really powerful in offense because it makes it very risky to actually V reversal against Ryu. Pretty much the input is like I've showed you. You're gonna do something like this. Do a, the first normal and the second normal and immediately V skill after the second normal. It is way easier than it looks. Trust me on that one. With just some practice, you'll be able to get it down in no time. The one final thing you have to know about his parry is that it also extends his V trigger timer. So, for example, if I activate my V trigger one, his V trigger one is on a timer as you just see, as you are seeing. And if Honda is doing his butt slams, with each parry, I'm gonna refill a little bit of my timer. Notice that the parry is refilling my timer a little bit, so it is also very good at that. Overall, in my opinion, it's a pretty good V-Skill. It's not like you cannot V-Skill light attacks and then full combo punish your opponents. It's not a third strike style parry. It's gonna be used versus telegraph attacks on offense against V-reversals and stuff like that. It's not maybe against fireballs in some matchups and in some situations, but it's not a third strike parry, right? It's not a parry into immediate punish. Not how you would expect and with that your perception on it might change i personally think it is still in the grand scheme of things one of the better v skills in the game in my opinion now his v skill 2 is a lot less you know it's not as appealing in my opinion his v skill 2 pretty much does this bunch right it's minus four on block so that is nice and this bunch has a parry window so for example as you can see, it's not that reliable, but if your opponent was doing an attack during it, physical attack only, you might go through it and hit them, and then you might do whatever you want at this point, right? However, like I'm just showing you, it is not very reliable. You can easily get crush countered out of this, or just get hit out of this. At minus 4, it could be punished on block. It have a lot of startup, but the good thing about this is that you can use it after the target combo. So you can use it like that, do the target combo and then V-Skill, which is nice, I mean that is a nice activation, it's a good way to build V-Gage pretty much, because the parry of course you are kinda relying on an action from your opponent, but this allows you to actively build V-Gage, which is good, like that's actually a really good change, also it is a decent V-Trigger activation, you can use it, activate V-Trigger, if your opponent does whatever they want, you can actually Again, let me just see, you can throw them here or do whatever you want, you are at a loss of plus frames. Overall, both of these V-Skills are nice in my opinion. If you, if, you, if you don't want to risk the berries, I would go with his V-Skill 2. His V-Trigger 2 have a built-in berry anyways. So V-Trigger 2 have a built-in berry, which is an, an even better berry if you want. So if you don't, or you think that the parry is too complicated for you, you can go for the simple V-Skill 2, which is easy to use on combos. Or if you want the more technical stuff and you want an answer versus telegraphed attacks, V-Skill 1 is a very technical V-Skill and it's a very helpful V-Skill in my opinion. So now I'm gonna talk for a little bit about reuse special moves. I'm gonna start with the Hadouken and the Shoryuken, of course. He, these are his two most iconic special attacks. Hadoukens in general, there are three versions and an EX version, so four in general. They are light, medium, and heavy. And of course, with Ryu, to be honest, I think you just need to use the light and the heavy one. The light fireball is a little bit slow, and the heavy one is really fast. And both of them are actually good because of that. For example, if you are using the light Hadouken, let's say if we are in this distance, 
we throw a light Hadouken, we are plus 14 on block as you can see above. If we do the heavy one, we are plus 7, right? This is very useful for fireboard traps. So for example, we will here set Guile to block and then jump, right? If I do a light Hadouken followed by a heavy, I get to anti-air him with an uppercut, right? But if I do heavy and then heavy, he gets to block. But at the same time, if we are from a far distance and he is trying to dash, heavy to heavy, he doesn't get to dash, light to light, maybe from here, he will get to dash and block, right? I have done a video before on fireball and fireballs and zoning and how you can use them. I will be leaving the link to that in the comments below because this is this is a subject that not, does need a lot of explaining. But generally, you want to use the light punch Hadouken as the setup fireball, while the heavy one is more to check forward movement and check movement in general, right? And basically, the heavy one is trying to get your opponent to react quick enough, while the light one is okay. Let's wait and see what he does, one, right? The EX Fireball is really fast though, and the main uses of Fireball as well, not just for zoning, one of the main uses for Fireball is to contest from range. We know, we told, we said before that Ryu have short range, right? So you will want to use your Fireball from ranges like that to basically contest against your opponent, right? This is one of the main tools for it, and from a range like that, you will find that the EX Fireball is actually really good, because it knocks down and then you get to pressure your opponent after it. If the EX Fireball gets blocked, it is plus two on block. So for example, in the corner, let's here have Guile in the corner. In the corner, you can do something like that and then throw him after. So the EX Fireball is very, very good for that. It's also pretty good for V-Trigger activation. You will do crushing medium kick, EX Fireball, dash up and still have plus frames. So that is very, very good, right? And on hits, you can get to some combos after that. Right? You can do some juggles here. So that is very, very nice, right? It is a nice move. It is very hard to react to, especially from this distance. And lead to a knockdown and Oki, which is very good. Overall, Ryu is a very fireball heavy centric character and again i will be leaving the link to the zoning video in the comments below so please check it out if you want more information on how you can zone with this character the other aspect of course is the shoryukens and he, of course also he has three uppercuts and an ex one there is a light medium and the heavy one right and they do increasingly more damage light is 110 Medium is 120, heavy is 130. If your opponent is jumping in on you, like say for example now we will record Guile to jump in. If Guile is jumping in like that, the medium one is your anti-air, right? It is the traditional anti-air uppercut. You can do it as late as possible and you will still anti-air your opponent. Also you can use some technique called cross cut, which basically you get to anti-air your opponent if they jumped over you as a cross-up. So it's something like this. Right? It's an important technique to learn, especially if you are new to Ryu and new to Shotos in general. Pretty much you have to do forward and then quarter circle back. So let's do it one more time. Notice my inputs I did forward and then quarter circle back and that is how I got this. Pretty much what you have to know is that the medium one is your anti-air DB. I've also done a video, separate video on how to do cross-cut DBs and you know I have done that video recently so I will be leaving that in the comments as well. So please check out the comments for the zoning video on fireballs and uppercuts. Obviously very popular topics apply to many characters and we had already had them covered. Now his uppercuts have different properties. The light one is anti-throw, the medium one is anti-air, the heavy one is Invincible to attacks after frame 3. So what does this mean? Let's here have Guile try to knock us down, right? And then he's gonna grab me on wake up. If I try to wake up with my medium uppercut it, It's a reversal, right? I should have gotten the attack, but I get thrown However, if I do my light punch uppercut 
I will beat him. So against throws, G heavy is a light punch uppercut will always win. However, if your opponent here does a meaty, for example, I try to use my light uppercut, I might trade. Medium uppercut might actually lose because it's a little bit slower. Heavy uppercut will win, right? So pretty much what you want to know is if your opponent is doing a block string or challenging you or something that is a little bit fishy, Heavy punch uppercut is what is most likely to beat it. Light punch uppercut if you're suspecting a throw. And medium punch uppercut to anti-air. EX uppercut is the all-purpose move, right? This is the one that will beat everything. So, for example, if he's doing the same sequence again, you can just EX uppercut. And if he's doing the hit, EX uppercut will beat it. So if you want an option that will straight out beat everything, EX uppercut is very good for that. EX sure you can is also pretty good at you know anti-airing attacks that are directly above your head, just like that one. From here, the medium bunch uppercut might actually whiff. So it's gonna depend on the angle a little bit, but again, yeah, it might whiff like that. While the EX one is a lot better at anti-airing above reuse head. Obviously, you can do something like crouching heavy punch, but that is not guaranteed. But EX uppercut is very good for anti-airs if they are directly above your head. Overall, of course, Shoryuken, Hadouken, these attacks speak for themselves. If you have any idea about fighting game, or if you ever checked out a Street Fighter game, or any fighting game in, in all honesty before, you already have a good idea about what these moves present and how you should use them. And now it's time to talk about the Hurricane Kicks or the Tatsumaki. Of course, there are two main variants. There is the Grounded variant and the Aerial variant. We're gonna talk about the Grounded one first and also we're gonna talk about the Donkey Kick, right? So let's first talk about the Grounded Hurricane Kicks. They have two main uses. The first one is the classic use and it is to go through fireballs. So you can use it to get through a sonic boom, kinda like that, right? This is how you classically or traditionally have always been able to use the hurricane kicks. So that is still in the game. However, one thing you have to note is that you cannot react to the sonic boom with the hurricane kick. So for example, if I'm trying to react here, I get hit. Ryu have to start spinning already to go through the fireballs. And if you do it, as you can see, if you do it from a range where you get to react, Gael will be able to block in time and he will be able to punish you. And one thing you have to know about the Tatsus in this game is that it doesn't fly over your opponent. So for example, if I do the Hurricane Kick, Ryu is gonna keep pushing Gael. So pretty much your opponent will always 100% punish you. In the previous games, Ryu would fly over their head, but that doesn't happen anymore. You're pretty much getting punished. So you have to be very careful about using the hurricane kicks against fireballs. Now let's talk about their main use now and that is combos. And Tatsus are very good in combos now. They hit crouching opponents so you can do like Tatsu, medium Tatsu or heavy Tatsu and they all hit opponents who are crouching and that is very very good. Of course all three of them have different uses and I will now explain each of them. First, let's talk about the light and medium, because light and medium tatsus are the easiest one to combo into. Out of light attacks like standing light punch or standing light kick, you can combo a light tatsu or a medium tatsu, right? So you can do that. Light jab into medium tatsu and that is three hit combo. Think of it that way. Light tatsu give you the better knockdown. When I dash, I am really plus. I was plus 14, right? I am super plus in this situation. But I don't get that much corner carry. From this same positioning, if I'm on the line and I do a light kick tatsu, I am about a square and a half ahead of the line, right? Or a square and a half. I have I've moved around a square and a half distance. But I have really good pressure at this point. Or I can do the medium kick tatsu. And if you noticed, I am almost two and a half squares. I have moved around two and a half squares, but I still do get decent pressure. Not as much, but still decent. Here after a dash, Ryu is plus 16. Medium after a dash, Ryu is plus two. So the post knockdown situation is still really good, but it's a lot better after the light. 
So the light give you good frames, but less corner carry, while the medium give you more corner carry, but less plus frames, right? So you kind of have to choose which one you want to go for. You kind of have to make a choice here. And one other thing is that after the light Tatsu, if you have a super, you can juggle a super here. This is one of the main ways that you get to combo into a super, right? Very easy combo. You don't have to cancel into anything. It's very easy, very reliable, and a very, very good combo. Or of course, you can just use a medium Tatsu, but you don't get a super juggle here. If you try to do a super, your opponent, you, know, you don't have enough frames to get a super juggle pretty much, right? And of course, you can do Tatsu into super in general. The heavy variant is really interesting because it switches sides. So for example, if I do the heavy kick tatsu, notice that Ryu is now on the other side. So you want to use the heavy tatsu, for example, of course it does the most damage. So light does 80, medium does 90, heavy does 100. But the main benefit is that it will switch side with your opponent. So if I am the one who's in the corner, and for example, let's say Guile is dashing in on me. Let's have Guile here dash up like we just set him to do earlier. I can do heavy kick Tatsu and now he is the one who is back to the corner. You're pretty much forcing a side switch. If I do medium, I remain on the same side. Light will leave me a little bit still close to the corner. But heavy Tatsu, I will move to the other side. So heavy Tatsu is really good for side switch combos, right? You get to switch side with your opponent and that is the main benefit. Overall, in my opinion, generally, I would go for the medium kick tatsu most of the time. Because if I do a combo like that, you're still getting a good amount of plus frames. Plus two means that you still get to meaty, you still get to throw your opponent, you're getting a little bit more damage, and in Street Fighter V, corner carry is very important. So it is a choice that you have to make if you want to get the added plus frames, or you want to get the added corner carry, in my opinion. For Street Fighter V, corner carry is super important, so I would recommend going more into the medium kick tatsu. Other things that you have to consider, medium kick tatsu is a lot more reliable in combos. For example, maximum range, medium kick, maximum range, medium kick to light tatsu, the tatsu might whiff, as you just seen, but to medium kick tatsu, the tatsu will connect. Right? This is gonna always connect 100%. While if you do the light one, the light tatsu might whiff. So my recommendation is to just medium kick tatsu and heavy tatsu when you want to switch side. Light is the best if you want to get the super juggle. That is personally how I do it, but if you want to use the light for the added oki, that is fine as well. Now the air tatsus are kinda whack in my opinion. They are not very good in this game. Um, you can use them after a, an air medium bunch. One of the main uses for air tatsu is to escape the corner, pretty much. So you're gonna use them like that to kinda move away from your opponent. Now, if I jump over Guile, I will be directly behind him. He can anti-air me, but if I use jumping air tatsu, I'm gonna create some distance between me and him. So you can kinda use it for a corner escape. You can use it as a jump in, but it's a, as you can see, the hitbox isn't very good. Jumping Tatsu is kind of whack in Street Fighter V, unfortunately. It's, you can't get the Ryu Jumping Tatsu to cross up, so even though it looks like it should cross up, his Tatsu never actually cross up, so that kind of sucks. You can kind of use it for something like that, but honestly, just jumping heavy kick. I mean, you can use it to kind of mess around if your opponent have a DB. So for example, if Guile is trying to anti-air me, I might use the Jumping Tatsu to mess up with their anti-air. But again, that is very, very specific. Like, outside of corner escape or just using it to miss out with anti-air, there is not that much that you can do with it, right? It's not fantastic. And he doesn't get the super juggles that he used to get in the previous games. Air Tatsu in general is kind of weak in Street Fighter V. Maybe in the mirror match, maybe in very specific situations it can be good. But other otherwise, it's not that good. EX Tatsu is interesting because uh, it sucks your opponent in. So for example, if Guile is dashing in at us, you can use, for example, a buffer it from like a light Tatsu and it will buff, it will suck Guile into you. So you can do stuff like that. 
But again, you can buffer into medium Tatsu now, so that is really really good. EX Tatsu was very important before because you couldn't uh, combo Tatsu against crouching opponents, but now that you do, it's not as useful in my opinion. You will want to use it when you got them in the corner for maximum damage combos. So for example, if, if he's in the corner, you can do that now, which combos, so that is nice. But otherwise, I would say after the buff to the Tatsus, after you know, after the buff that made his Tatsus being able to combo against crouching opponent, I don't think you need midi EX Tatsus that much anymore, right? I would honestly just do medium kick Tatsu now. Overall, his Tatsus are superb. Grounded Tatsus are a superb tool now. They do good damage, good off corner carry, very easy to combo into, good Oki, good positioning, very good move overall. EX Tatsu is actually pretty good, but it's kind of a waste of a meter now, in my opinion. And the air Tatsus are kinda whack. You know, you might use them to mess up with their anti-airs, or corner escape if they got you in the corner, but otherwise, I wouldn't use them that much, to be honest. The final special move we have is the Donkey Kick. And Donkey Kick used to be really important, because Tatsus were whiffing on crouching opponents. Now, the main reason I will use for Donkey Kick is cancelling into Super. The, the thing about Donkey Kick is that they don't lead to Oki, right? So for example, if you do a Heavy Punch into Heavy Kick Donkey, you don't get to pressure at this point. And why would you do that if you could just do Medium Kick Tatsu and get to pressure, right? Like it, 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 it doesn't make that much sense now, but you can use it, as I said, for fishing and comboing into Super. For example, if I do a Jumping Combo like that one, Jumping Heavy Bunch into Light Tatsu into Super. That is doing 4, 5, 9, right? But if I do the Jumping Heavy Bunch into Heavy Bunch, Heavy Kick Donkey into Super, that is doing 483. So you're getting about 40 more damage, right? So you can use it for buffers and pretty much for hit confirming into Super. Other than, other than that, I honestly don't think they are that useful. Like I said, this might whiff, this is a lot more consistent, and buffering with it into the donkey kick and then into super is the main use now. Other than that, they are not terribly useful. They are useful in some juggle combos, for example, you can do something like this. So for example, you can get a combo like that one, get and combo into the light kick donkey. So they are useful in some combos. But otherwise, if you're getting a grounded combo, just combo into medium kick Tatsu, that is your best bet. Now, the EX Donkey is a very important move. EX Donkey is Ryu's main combo extension tool, right? It is his main big damage combo attack. You pretty much can combo into it from anything now except light, so you can do medium bunch into EX Donkey, crouching medium bunch into EX Donkey. But you have to cancel it kinda quickly. Crouching medium kick to EX Donkey, Heavy Punch to EX Donkey, whatever, it combos for almost everything, and that is very very good. And you get to follow up after it, so you can do stuff like that, into Uppercut, or like Medium, into Donkey, into Light Tatsu, or Donkey or donkey into Medium, into Back Heavy Kick, and that. I will be leaving more of that in the combo section. EX Donkey is a combo attack, pretty much, you're gonna be buffering a lot in the neutral, Crouching medium bunch and crouching medium kick, and if they happen to walk into it, they eat a ton of damage. This is gonna be now a big part of playing Ryu, right? Doing that and buffering into EX Donkey and then getting pressure. Overall, his special moves are decent. The Tatsu and Donkey are mostly a combo centric base attack. I'm gonna be leaving a combo section at the end of the video, so please check it out. So let us now check out Ryu's V-Triggers and I'm gonna start to talk about his V-Trigger 1. His V-Trigger 1 is a 2 bars V-Trigger so that is pretty nice and it's an install V-Trigger. It pretty much enhances Ryu in every way. When Ryu activates his V-Trigger 1, his V-Gage will turn into a timer and that timer pretty much have a set interval. Nothing you do will consume the timer heavily, like throwing fireballs, uppercut, normals, nothing really consumes V-Gage except his super. Typically, Ryu super is Shinko Hadouken. It does 320 damage and no stun, 
when you when your NV trigger, it's gonna be Dungeon Hadouken. This does 350 damage and 300 stun. So it is the only super in the game that can actually stun your opponent. This is very powerful in actuality because if say Shani is about to get stunned on the next hit, when you do the super like that, right? First of all, you did a ton of damage and then you get a post stun combo, leading to a ton of damage overall. And that is very, very good. The V trigger also significantly enhances reuse fireballs. So, for example, when you do a fireball point blank, it is minus 6, but V trigger fireballs are minus 2, right? And you can charge the fireballs as well. There are multiple levels to charge, so without any charge, they are minus 2. If you charge them for a bit, they are neutral on block 0, and if you fully charge it, they guard break your opponent, and that is very, very powerful. Another thing I also have to mention is that the super also guard breaks, right? So that is very, very important to know. Dungeon Hadouken also does a guard break, so that is very, very good, right? So he gets a better super, gets better fireballs. The EX fireball get enhanced by a lot as well. Typically, it's a multiple hitting attack doing 100 damage. If you're in V trigger, it's a three hitting attack. It is super fast. Like from this range, you will never be able to react to it. And it it, it, it basically have a shorter a shorter charge time to being an unblockable. So for example, if she is guarding here, let's check it out. If I'm doing the fully charged Hadouken, it's taking about a second. An EX full charge is a lot faster. This is about, I don't know, it's about like third of a second or half a second. It is a significantly shorter. And because it is significantly shorter, there is actually set play where you can get this. So for example, we can do something like a crush counter here. And then she will get hit, right? So there are setups where you can get guard breaks on wake up. If you happen to get a sweep, and it act you know get to sweep activate v trigger you can get a guaranteed guard break or your opponent will have to wake up with super or something to avoid it so that is very powerful of course also due to this you will see the famous ryu corner trap where he is doing like a normal into hadouken right can be hard for your opponent to kind of challenge in this situation because yes the fireball is plus Reuse standing light kick is really fast and the block stun is kind of weird. There's a lot of spacing being played. You can make him whiff and whiff punch him with something into Hadouken. Of course, one of the other very powerful elements of the Hadouken in V trigger is that it knocks down. So when you do something, generally crouching medium kick Hadouken is like that. Let me show you a very good example. Maximum range crouching medium kick into Hadouken. This didn't even combo and it doesn't knock down. In V trigger, maximum range crouching medium kick to Hadouken, it does knock down and it is more likely to combo because the Hadouken is faster. So maximum ultimate max range, it may not combo, but a little bit closer than that, you are likely to get the combo and it does knock down and that is very, very good, right? That's a lot better being able to get this and then get Oki is very, very strong. While in the other one or regular state, it is harder to get this to combo, and as you see, it doesn't knock down while here, it does knock down, making it a lot easier to hit confirm into super as well. This sequence in general is pretty powerful with V trigger 1. Now, the Hadoukens is not the only thing that get enhanced. He also gets enhanced juggles with his uppercuts. So, for example, typically you cannot do Light kick Tatsu into EX uppercuts, right? But in V trigger, this now is a combo, right? Which is a really good combo. In the corner, you cannot do something like a, an EX fireball into Hadouken. That would lead, but you would get like the last hit only. But if you, that did 154, right? If they are in the corner and we are using the V trigger one now. You're getting the full damage instead of just the, you know, the final frame of the DB. So, for example, this is hard to land, and if you do, you're getting 154. With this one, you are getting 246. You're getting a lot more damage 
So that is really, really good. Even meterless in the corner, you can do Hadouken, which will knock down and then get the uppercut. So for example, now in the corner, you can get a combo like that. And do a ton of damage and stun. Right, so he does a ton of damage and stun. One fun thing that you can do is you can actually do double EX Hadoukens. So you can do something like this. For a ton of damage and stun. Like if you get a jumping combo here. That is so much damage and stun. Like that is incredible. That, that, that combo did 800 stun on Chun Li, which is actually crazy. So his combo potential with the uppercuts expands a ton. Again, will be leaving more in the combo section. The heavy uppercut in general does 130, 150 stun. When you're in V trigger, it's doing 140 but 200 stun. So you're doing a lot more stun as well. And not only all of that, one of the biggest changes to Ryu in his V-Trigger is that his punch normals are... All of them have plus 2 added frame of advantage. This pretty much means that you are getting counter hit combos. Generally, if let's, let's bring it back to mid-screen. Generally, you cannot do crouching medium punch to standing medium punch. This doesn't combo, right? But if you have the... V, if, 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 if it is on counter hit... You can get it to combo, correct? Because the crouching medium punch becomes plus 6. Now, what you will notice is that in V trigger, without counter hit, it is plus 6. So this means that this now is a combo. You can go from jab to medium. And this is a combo. And you can actually go from jab to medium to heavy. Light bunch, medium bunch, heavy bunch. And it will combo. You can go from a crouching medium bunch, which is now plus 6. To standing medium bunch to sweep. This is now a combo. And crazier than that, you can actually go from something like the crouching light kick, crouching light punch, you're now plus 5, which means you get a standing medium. So from a crouching light kick, this is a thing now, which means that you can get EX Donkey, and then uppercut for massive damage. That was massive damage from a crouching light kick because of the V trigger puffs. Overall, we use V-Trigger 1 now is a very strong, a very strong uh, tool. It buffs his fireballs frame data by a lot. It buffs his damage by a lot. It gives him new property, new juggle combos. It gives him a ton of new combo routes to do. It is a fantastic V-Trigger at this point. Again, not super mix-up heavy, but it enhances the character in every way possible. The only drawback to it is that the timer is kind of short, as you can see. It's not gonna last super long, but while it is there, Ryu is very strong when he is in V Trigger 1. And now it's time for Ryu's V Trigger 2, and Ryu's V Trigger 2 is a very interesting V Trigger. Because Ryu pretty much enters a power up state, just like V Trigger 1. In this V Trigger, Ryu turns to Thanos, he becomes the destroyer of worlds. You pretty much get to snap your finger and kill anyone, right? One uppercut into the V-Trigger special, and voila, that is quarter of your health. One combo into the V-Trigger special, and that is about 40% of your health. It's very, very strong. Basically, any touch you land with Ryu is gonna lead into a ton of damage. If you lead, if you land a fireball, if you land a donkey kick, if you land an uppercut, you will get to combo into this attack and do some absurd damage output. For example, let's say Kagi is foolish enough to jump against us. Uppercut, bam! Quarter of your health for jumping, right? It's very, very powerful in all honesty. You cannot super cancel the V trigger special. But it still does a good amount of damage and stun, so that is very very good. If you are trying to add this to your combos, you can do something like this now. A basic combo is doing 420. That is about 40% on the average character. From a jumping combo with one bar of EX meter, and you still have another use for the V trigger, right? So this is a very easy move to use, you pretty much end it and tack it at the end of your combos. It is also a very consistent attack. For example, if I'm from this range, even from here, I can do EX Hadouken and get the follow-up. 
the range where you can get, still get the cancel and still get it to combo is gigantic however you have to be careful because this is unsafe on block you are minus 22 so if you happen to get this on block it is very punishable so you have to hit confirm this my recommendation you will just use it up close for scrouchy medium kick hadouken like that one have a lot of time to confirm or at the end of any combos or as an anti-air db and then you cancel into the v-trigger special dealing a ton of damage the special can also be used as a bury so it have a bury follow up and it is a faster bury than his typical v skill so it is good in that regard and it automatically sets up a combo right so that is nice but this will use your entire bar so you get to do one bury and that's it and you can cancel into EX move after it so you can go into EX donkey but if you notice the damage output is not that fantastic honestly I would use the V skill 1 buddy and um, only use this if I have super so for example if I have super you can do like uppercut into super here right and that will deal a ton of damage but otherwise I would keep my V skill or keep my V trigger and just use the V skill 1 buddy Let's do it one time. Now I'm dealing almost comparable damage with one bar and I still have another activation that I can use whenever I want and get a ton of damage. My recommendation would be to not to use the parry that much except if you have bar and you know that it's gonna kill. The parry is good of course, it's really fast at least to guaranteed combos. But the V trigger special at the end of your combos is way too good and it is a good parry but it's not super significantly better than his V skill 1 parry. Like there are very specific situation and very specific frame traps where the V trigger 1 would be able to deal with and the regular one wouldn't. That is my recommendation but of course if you like to use it you can still and you get to whiff it twice. So if you whiff it you can get two of these and before the V trigger runs out. Overall, this is a very straightforward V trigger, very easy to use and very, very powerful. The timer is very long. As you can see, the timer is ticking down. It lasts for like a. F it lasts a ton of time. As you can see, the timer is taking forever to last. And because every single hit leads to a ton of damage, your opponent will be very scared, which will allow you to bully them with throws shimmies and do whatever you want and then you land the one hit and bam the hills will melt very powerful v trigger very easy to use v trigger v trigger one is a lot more technical in what you can do with it and the timer is short so you don't have that much to work with while with v trigger two it's very easy to use very straightforward and very powerful if you are starting with ryu or even if you are like a ryu main i would honestly just play v trigger two for now abuse it while it lasts because it is that good and it is worth abusing in all honesty. And now before I leave you to combos, I wanted to briefly talk about Ryu Super and some general tips and advice regarding the character. Now of course Ryu Super's the Shinku Hadouken is actually a pretty interesting super because you can do it with the light, medium or heavy punches. And they change the fireball speed. If I'm full screen, if I do the light one, notice that it is kind of slow, right? But if I do the heavy one, it's actually pretty fast, right? So it doesn't matter which version you are using. If you're doing it for combos, I would always recommend going for the heavy one because it travels the fastest. So it is going to be the most reliable in combos. And that super in general is very easy to land on combos. You can land it after Hadouken. So you can do something like Crouchy Medium Bunch Hadouken and then Link Super after it. You can land it after Donkey Kicks. You can land it after Uppercuts. You can even link it from so many moves, right? You can do like something like Standing Medium Bunch. Hit Confirm into the super. This will combo. You can do a standing heavy kick and then link into super and that will combo. There's so many ways that you can get this to actually link which is very very cool. And one of the main ways that you're gonna be using is again after light kick tatsu. 
this look like it shouldn't work but it absolutely does just make sure that you are using the heavy shinko hadouken and a lot of beginners will love to do something like the target combo then you do a light kick tatsu and then you do the super and that's a very easy very good combo Overall, Ryu is a very powerful character this season, his super is really good, but I wanted to talk about a couple of things here and there that I didn't get the chance to mention. A lot of times when you are using Shoto characters, you would want to move forward and do some things like a normal into fireball. Like if I'm moving forward with Ryu and I do medium bunch to Hadouken, just like that one. Notice that I did medium and then Hadouken, you are looking at my inputs. I didn't do DP motion. But the game interpreted the input as EDP because of the input leniency. So for this to uh, to overcome this, you need to do the fireball as a half circle. You're gonna need to do the fireball like that. If you do the fireball as a half circle motion, you will avoid getting that to happen. So now I'm gonna move forward. See, that is pretty much how you can always walk forward, do your normal, cancel into the Hadouken without getting this to come out, right? Which is really problematic. So this is the first part and I, I thought it was important to mention this because it is the downfall of so many Shoto players. The other thing that I wanted to talk about briefly is his throw game, the dash and the forward heavy punch, right? Again, you will want to contest from this range dash into throw forward heavy punch or jump and his throw is actually really good it puts you at a plus four advantage and you can check your opponent with a crouching medium kick right you can get this or even you can get crouching medium kick into heavy punch fireball this will shake them and because they are super close you can walk up and throw them again right or you can shake them with your standing heavy punch there is a lot that you can do Ryu actually have a very good throw in this season Overall, he's a very good character now, very complete character. There is so much that you can do with this character. can play him totally defensively if you want, can play him totally aggressively if you want, or you can play him as a bit of both. If you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like or a comment. It helps this channel so much. I will be leaving a link to the Discord page and the Patreon pages in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and stay safe.